All right, so talk about a party punch. In the one corner, we've got Paul Ryan with a plan to get the budget in balance through largely spending cuts and largely no tax hikes, he says. And in the other corner, Democratic Senator Patty Murray with a plan that doesn't get the budget in balance, but does offer a mix of spending cuts and about a trillion bucks in tax hikes. Forget who wins. Is this more a case of all of us likely losing? Because the cuts really aren't there. For tonight's Cavito Clash, we've got Rick Unger joining me, Elizabeth Meineke, and Scott Martin on whether this is Lincoln Douglas or Ollie versus Buster Douglas. <laughs> It's a little boxing reference. You have to know that. that there will be a quiz tomorrow. Um, all right. So what do you think, Elizabeth? I mean, leaving aside some of the controversial things that Paul Ryan wants to do, in the end, uh, just trimming the increase. That's it. Yeah, I mean, I, th I think one of the big things here that people lose sight of is actually balancing the budget. You know, Patty Murray, the Democrat's supposed budget, um, doesn't even balance, and it's supposed to raise $1 trillion in revenue. So that right there tells you we're talking more about a shopping spree than an actual budget. And I think people to rem need to remember that a budget hopefully means you're only spending as much as you take in. You're not spending more than you take in. Um, Scott Martin, the markets seem to sense maybe that uh, despite all the, the gesturing back and forth, we are at least cutting the growth and stuff. We're not really cutting, but that's better than doing nothing, or, or am I misreading the markets? No, uh, Neil, I think you're reading it correctly. I mean, I think that's one reason we've had such a good year so far as we were leading up to this sequestration deadline, which, as you know, we made it to. And so that's the issue. I, I think the market likes to see some responsibility here, but I agree with you. I mean, still taking out the scalpel or the peeler, if you will, instead of, say, the steak knife is really tough here for the economy because Senator Murray says, hey, this is a great plan for America. It's a great plan for everybody as being pro-growth. Well, I don't know what $1 trillion in additional tax rates here is actually good for growth. I don't see it. Um, Rick, you're tight with a lot of very powerful Democrats. <laughs> and tight. I, I, I know what bothers them is that he's taking on entitlements. He's not really, you know, applying a cleaver to them, uh, but he's taking them on. Where Jay Carney said yesterday, when it comes to things like Medicare, no, don't think of changing the ages. That's just, a, 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 you know, a non-starter. So if entitlements are off the table for a lot of Democrats right now, uh, we're, we're, we're kind of going nowhere fast. Well, look, you have to be a little bit careful here. We know that Murray's budget opening shot from the Democrats, Ryan's budget opening shot from the Republicans, president somewhere in the middle. Um, important to keep this in mind. I will tell you this. I, I have to disagree with you when you say the Ryan budget doesn't take a cleaver to entitlements. 59% of his spending cuts come from Medicare and Medicaid. That's pretty heavy. You can be for that, you can be against that, but that's a pretty big deal. The thing that really shocked me about his budget, and I gotta tell you, you know I'm not the biggest fan of, of Representative Ryan, but at least it's always been real life. He based this entire budget on a fantasy, and it stunned me. He's basing his entire budget on revoking Obamacare. Now, you can like that idea. Absolutely. You can hate that idea, but guess what? It's the law. Even, but even in the President end, Bush's head in the of OMB end, all said of these so. entitlement programs will be getting more funding than they are now. They will always go up. No disagree. So you're calling that draconian? Well, if 59% if of the cuts are coming from one area. Right. Well, leaving aside security. the breaks on the cuts, it's a very good point. Uh, and he could argue then Patty Murray's plan to really do this on the back of hiking taxes. Right. Well, it's not that going isn't in. offensive? It's not going in. So you think these are starters to get a deal in the middle? At, at best. This okay. Is, this is what concerns me. And I think I also know that the president is somewhere between the two. And you have to ask the question, is that by accident or is that on purpose? Well, Elizabeth, I just look at this and realize what the, the, the theater we went through on the $85 billion in, in sequestration cuts and the nightmare that caused. And now I know, and to get this immediate response, every time you touch entitlements, you're... You know, you're throwing Harvey Corman off a cliff and all that. And I just think <laughs> there's no way you can come ahead. You know what I mean? There's no way you can come ahead because um, if they were going after Paul Ryan last year, they're, they're throttling down on him this year. I know. Well, but the other thing, Neil, is, you know, in, in that drama where we talk about, you know, the $85 billion, President Obama came out and said he was willing to deal with Democrats in his own party who didn't want to touch entitlements. He said that entitlements were a problem in his March 1st press conference. 
And he also said that he would be willing to talk to people yeah. in his party who didn't think that Medicare should be touched. And so why start with non-starters? -starter, why doesn't Patty Murray include something in her budget that talks about well, Medicare? Maybe, and that no, would no, be maybe an to issue. Rick's point, it is a starting gate. You know what I mean? And that these two have come out with plans essentially 24 hours apart. Very different plans. But I've seen the history of this goes. Agree. That, that, <laughs> that maybe this is an attempt to find a meeting in the middle. I guess, Scott Martin, the issue would be where is the middle? Well, Neil, that was my next question to you, my friend, is where is the middle? Because I got to listen, I, I, I got to bet, Rick, a sugary style New York City drink here, because I don't think the president is he's in the middle on nut. this. He doesn't he's thin want to touch it. as a fiddle. He doesn't even bother. He looks, got he looks great, all doesn't place. He? he doesn't touch it. You guys haven't corrupted him yet. So listen, I, I tell you what, I mean, it, the, the president loves, I'm sure, the Murray plan, and I don't think there's any question with regards to, I mean, the attack on the Medicare spending, Medicaid, you have to go, the number is so big, 59%, because those are the big ones. I mean, you're not going to make any progress if you don't touch the big elephants in the room, so you have to go there. Well, actually, there's some, there's some truth in what you say there. You do have to go after the big ones. The problem is there's two big ones. Entitlements are certainly one of them, but what's the other one? Defense, not a penny. So when, not a penny. Which we all defense, defense. But when Senator Coburn goes in with a plan announced on this show a little more than two weeks ago to hack $360 billion from defense right. and finds other Republicans are open to it, I agree with you. Everyone needs to see their acts scored. Uh, but I just notice a great deal more reluctance on the part of your. Friends. I think you'll be surprised. I think uh, you keep telling me that, and I'm waiting. Well, it's not time yet. I think you're going to really? you're going to see the president step up to the plate in the next three to four weeks, is what my guess would be. He hasn't and delivered he a budget do when yet. He steps up to the plate? I think I think we're. You looking, can easily step up to the plate and just we're, out. We're looking grand bargain. I believe it. I'm okay. optimistic about it, and all I right. think that's the answer to the questions being asked here. Okay, uh, we're going to have all these guys back in a little bit. In the meantime, if you. Tax them, they will run. What'd you say? Or let's just say that the president is hoping his tour goes a little bit better than Justin Bieber's. Bieber fighting with photographers and canceling a date on his European tour. All that as the president kicks off his own budget tour today. He's meeting with both sides throughout the week, but we're hearing many Democrats are now trying to distance themselves from the president. And they don't want him to cave to Republicans. Elizabeth Meineke joining us, Rick Unger, Scott Martin on whether his biggest worries are actually from his own party. Uh, Rick, it's your party. Actually, we've talked about this before, and I do think that his biggest worries are ultimately going to be from his own party. I think it's overstating it a bit to say that Democrats are already distancing themselves from him. But I've told you this right from the start. The president is serious about entitlement reform. No, he's not. Yes, he is. No, he's not. And that's why <laughs> you're going to see him having a harder time with Democrats. You watch what's coming. You well, watch. Every signal he's given, Elizabeth, to me, no offense to the president, who's a very fine human being, Appreciate is just the that. opposite. Just the opposite. He drove a hard left with his inauguration speech, his State of the Union address, his push for hundreds of billions of dollars in more spending. Um, I see nothing that, that my good I've friend Mr. Unger is talking about. I've seen it. I mean, until I see an actual entitlement reform bill on the table that he says he is willing to sign, I'm going to be a little bit, just a little bit skeptical as well. Shame um, cost I, I really, you know, okay, we'll honestly, I've been waiting four and a half years for this entitlement stuff. reform. Yeah. <laughs> I've been waiting four and a half years for it to happen. I mean, he's had a lot of time to, to put forward entitlement reforms and make this an issue, and he has not yet made it a priority. So I'm kind of skeptical that there's going to be any long-term rift until yeah. Democrats think he actually hurts their re-election chances. I don't think you'll see too much of a rift between Well, it's and always Democrats. a problem, for the most part, not all the time, but for the most part, for an incumbent president in his first or second term, those midterm elections, they always lose seats. Now, net, net, I think Republicans would need uh, to lose 17 seats for the House to swap, I think. It's not going like to happen. Not, I, I would agree. I don't think that's going to happen. But, Scott, um, would the president have more trouble on the left? For example, if he blinks and he goes ahead with the Keystone Pipeline, that's going to make unions happy, but it's going to make environmentalists furious. If he even looks at adjusting, to, to Mr. Unger's point, the, 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 the inflation uh, rate for which you peg benefit increases to something like a chain-weighted index, I mean, that's going to get Nancy Pelosi upset and Harry Reid upset. <laughs> so uh, by, there, by a... definition... You know, is the stuff Rick's talking about something that is going to alienate his base? 
Yeah, I mean, Neil, there's a lot of things, let's face it, that, that make Nancy Pelosi upset. But I'll tell you, I mean, look, look at the compromise from the fiscal cliff deal. I mean, we talked about, uh, you know, unemployment insurance a couple weeks ago. I mean, certainly there has been some compromises that the left has not totally liked that he's made. But, gosh, I, I got to disagree with Rick here. I mean, it, it, unless, say, the, 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 the left comes out of these meetings, Neil, with, like, the Sistine Chapel with smoke coming out of their ears, there is no way <laughs> this president Trust is going to Trust me, when the left is in a room and there's not smoke coming out of it, then... You're in the wrong room. Then we got a problem, exactly. And it's probably <laughs> white kidding. smoke at that. I'm here, I'm here's kidding. the issue, though, Neil. He like... is going to pander. He's going to pander to the base. You know that the right is going to go to these meetings, whether it's Gang of Six, the Super Committee, all the stuff we put forth before that has never arrived on compromise. I can't imagine that now this president is going to say, okay, you know what, guys? The, well, the, the maybe he wants to be consequential. You argue when they, we were talking around the time of the inauguration, he wants to be exactly. a consequential And figure. he understands what has to be done. Don't confuse making changes entitlements to cutting entitlements. There's a big difference there. I don't think he has any intention of making anybody worse off. But we all know that there are ways that you can make some critical fixes in Medicare, in Medicaid, in Social Security well, I mean, without you hurting that, benefits. Fine, but you you got to hope by making changes. You're, you're forking over less money for him. I think you're going to see that happen, and I think that he's supportive of it. I know it. you're a little under the weather. I mean, I'm, the I'm okay. okay. I'm okay. Um, Elizabeth, how hopeful are you that we're going to avoid a shutdown? Oh, probably about as hopeful as I was the last time we were trying to avoid some sort of disastrous, you know, off the cliff cut and it didn't happen. <laughs> so, okay, that's not, not very not, encouraging, Elizabeth. <laughs> yeah, we'll not, yeah I'm down. sorry. I, I'm, I, I'm going yeah. to be Scott, the rain flag would here. would the markets <laughs> welcome another act of brinkmanship, uh, or are they getting tired of that, too? Are guys like you who just want to get some assurance, like you were telling me, you knew rates would go up if Barack Obama was reelected? You just like the closure knowing that what you thought would happen did happen. You could move on. You had at least that certainty. Would the markets welcome that when it comes to any of this budget stuff? Yes, because we're on, what, the, the fourth, the fifth, the sixth, the seventh inning of all this stuff, Neil? So, yeah, it, it, as it gets further down the road, the markets know that this is all noise, and they're turning themselves back to what's important, which is earnings and fundamentals, which, listen, they're not great, but those things, both of those things are going well. So the right. market says, hey, you know what, we're going to focus on that stuff and not worry about Washington. All right, who's going to come out politically ahead if I could be so crass with this? How, how do you mean when you say who? Who looks better? The president wins. I mean, that's simply where we're at today. The president is going to... never say a bad thing about him? Uh, yeah, you've heard me say a few things no. that didn't make him happy, really. and I've certainly written more than a few things well, that don't make write, him happy. Well, when you write, but when you come on this show, all of a sudden... That's my job. Really? Okay. Um, Elizabeth, I think Republicans, since the sequestration thing, feel they have their mojo back, do they? I don't really think they do. Honestly, I don't think the Republicans have really, truly won a PR battle for hmm. um, all of Obama's term. And it's sad to say that you have to even be talking about PR okay. battles. You really should be talking about effective legislation. But all I don't right. think they're going to come out ahead. Guys, the idea is to agree with the host, but that's okay. She's right. Um, all right. Fine, fine. You're all very smart. You're all very good. We'll have a lot more on this and the fallout tomorrow. Good night.